So today we're going to be playing with uh, some inks, uh, you know, water reactive inks and watercolor paper. Um, I have a panel right here and let's see, it measures four and a half by, by six and a half. For now, I am going to trim it down. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. If you are, if you're not new, then welcome back to my channel. Okay, so we're gonna start with a, a just Distress Ink in Mermaid Lagoon. I'm just gonna swish it all over. And I'm working on my Tim Holtz and Tonic Studios um, glass mat. And this is the, what is it called? The non-stick mat. All right, right now I'm taking a little bit of salty ocean. Just another blue color. And this is by Altenew, it's the crisp dye ink in ocean waves. I'm gonna try, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna have the same like effect, but I'll try it. It's a little bit in the middle. All right, and now I just spritz it with a little bit of water. You see that beading? I love it. Okay, and let me see which side. I'm gonna be using the smoother side of my um, watercolor paper. And because I want like little splatters like that, or more texture, I'm not gonna do anything to it. I'm not gonna manipulate um, the colors at all. I'm just gonna kind of stamp it down and run my fingers down to it, like a stamp, you know? Pick it up. That's the first one. And what I do is that I go straight into a heat gun in between each layer okay now i'm gonna i'm not gonna put you through the misery of listening to my heat gun so i'm gonna cut the video and go straight into a couple of layers of this so that you don't have to okay Okay, you guys, so actually, uh, for a little more concentration of color, I'm going to go in with the Distress Oxide Spray in Mermaid Lagoon. I'm just going to make sure I uh, mix it up real quick. I shake it real, you know, real good. And I am going to spray it right on my mat. Spray it a couple of times. Just a little bit more water. And then let's see if there's a difference. Pretty sure it's gonna be like more concentrated in color. Let's see, oh yeah. You see that difference? That's what I was going for. I needed like color. 
Like, I'm going for blue, you know? Not just blue. <laughs> and I feel like, to be honest, I always get dirty, like, trying to, like, ink blend or deal with, like, alcohol inks or anything like that. It always happens that... I just get very inky. <laughs> All right. It's okay if you leave a little bit of white areas for now. We're gonna go over those areas with a darker color. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna set this aside to dry and I will be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. This is all dry. All right, so we are using our Misty. I already took out the foam um, inserts. We're gonna go ahead and put our uh, background stamp by Fun Stamper's Journey right here. Before, we're gonna put our little panel right in the corner. And what I have done is that I have an old silhouette cameo mat that I cut into size to fit my Misty, and that way I don't need to use the magnets all the time. I mean, they're nice for some things because of course this is not going to stick 100%, but for the most part, it, it should stay in place. All right, we just go ahead and... It doesn't really matter that it's not going to be perfect because it's gonna be very, um, it's not gonna be very crisp. You'll see the end results. All right, now we are using the Simon Hurley Create Dye Ink Pad in Midnight Snack. I love uh, his inks. All right. These inks are very, very good for blending. You can also uh, stamp with them. They are water reactive, so you can watercolor with them. I really love them. Okay, so I could go in with a second coat of this, but I won't because I want it to be darker in some places, lighter in some other places. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to flip this and just stamp it again. So I'm definitely creating a mon like a monochromatic background, you know, tone on tone. All right, so see how it's like darker in some areas where it hits twice. Perfect. And now for these two corners, look at how easy I do it. Let me see if I can show you. All right, so I go ahead and I just ink up one of the corners right here. And I simply place it right there. Ta-da. And then you do it on the other side. right here like so 
And so now I've stamped everywhere and different tones pretty much. Look at how dark it's right here versus how light is right there. And that's what we're going for, you guys. Okay, moving on. I'm going to clean this and put it away. Okay, you guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and do something. Uh, I'm not proud of this, you guys. I actually unmounted a red rubber stamp. It came with this, and that's what I use for my Misty. I just wrapped around like a microfiber cloth, but I really like this stamp. And the way that it's actually very organic, um, you're not gonna be able to tell, but some of these are just like the outline or like a shadow i'm sorry it looks like a shadow and these that are more raised look very solid what i am going to do is take some speckled ed egg i'm sorry speckled egg and pumice stone distress oxides and kind of stamp very randomly all over this background Okay, perfect. So again, you're not gonna be able to tell this far in, into the game. <laughs> it's too soon. Be patient, please be patient. Bear with me. We're gonna get there, I promise. All right, so we need to dry this or just let it dry because I don't have any patience. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the heat gun and then I'll be right back to go to our next step. Okay. Right now, very simply, we're going to darken up the edges. And I usually, I'm not even sure if I explained this in the other video, but if if you missed it, here it is, my little trick. I do multiple shades or colors on the edges. I start with, let's say right now, I'm going to do dark blue, which is that same midnight snack. And I may hit it with a little bit of the uh, black soot distress ink. So, I'm going to take a brush, a craft brush or ink blending brush or whatever. They go by different, different names. And we're just simply hitting those edges. And I promise you guys, this is going to look so beautiful.
Okay, you guys, so this is how we're looking right now. I really, really love it. I hope the camera's picking up these bright colors. This is very bright in person, and I'm not sure um, that with my settings it's going to be possible to be, uh, to be seen. All right, so what I'm doing is that I'm taking those same snowflakes, this same stamp, and I'm cleaning it right now so that I can go in with a little bit of white pigment ink. I'm using the Hero Arts Hero Hues and Unicorn White because they're not showing up as much as I would like them to. So I'm sure this will show up better. I think I overdid it. But anyway, <laughs> we can all learn at home. Jeez, I don't really want to make a mistake here, so I'm going to stamp it off over here. Guys, this is the first one that I made. I was going to uh, use these colors, but then I was like, no, I want it to be brighter. So technically, this is the card spoiler alert. <clears throat> okay, that's not that bad. All right, we're just going to just go for it. Okay, that looks cool. Okay, and I really don't need it to be stark white. I just need... You know, I just need some snowflakes here and there. What was I just saying? <laughs> okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're bringing the Misty back out, and again, without the insert, we're placing this right in the corner right here, and this time we are using the magnet because we need to make sure that this stays in place. Okay, we're going to be using these ornaments by Spellbinders, I have that one, this one. Okay, so in the same sense that I did the other card, I'm going to be placing two ornaments. I know the rule is to have three, I know. I'm breaking rules today. Doing this one. Let me see how long. Because it comes with this string, you guys, and it's so cute. Okay, perfect. That's perfect placement right there. I'm gonna pick it up with my misty door. Let me go we'll come right here and show you. All right, make sure they're there. We're using black archival ink. What that's gonna do is that it's not only gonna be stark. I was gonna say stark white. No, it's not gonna be very dark and rich, but it's also going to allow me. To heat emboss on it and that's the whole point of it so I'm going to go over it with my anti-static powder tool and I ink up the stamps and then just stamp away I usually double and triple stamp just to make sure it gets contact in on each and every side. So the first one is always like a practice run. And then with the second one, you I usually see if it needs a third one. If 
I am shaking the table. I apologize. Here's us one. That's number two. And I actually think number two, mm -mm, kidding, just kidding. <clears throat> I was gonna say that number two was the winner, but no, we're doing it one more time just to make sure. That's the beauty of having a Misty, you guys. You can stamp 20 times if you don't get it right. <laughs> and you're, you will get perfect placement because everything is staying exactly where it was the, same, you know, the first time. All right, now it's good. Quickly grab your embossing powder where you're seeing Wow and Clear Gloss. And I have here a coffee filter. That's what I use. Very, very inexpensive, reusable also. And then whenever it's done, then you don't really have to regret anything. <laughs> All right. And even though I technically dried it with the heat gun, I want you to see what happens. That is a fail, but hey, I'll teach you how to how to kind of um, fix it. I'm not really too worried. Let's see. I'm going to grab a stiff brush like this one. And very simply sweep off the areas that you do not want embossed. Simple as that. Like this. I'm going to show you how I actually fix this issue because I did not dry this. 100% of the way and I don't know if you can tell but the embossing powder got stuck everywhere else as well so all I do is I grab a stiff brush like this one and I just sweep it off like you know like from here just like so and then I'm going to do it in all the areas that caught uh, embossing powder that I do not want to emboss. I may leave one or two snowflakes, but not all over. Okay, guys, so right now I have some gum Arabic powder um, on my craft mat. I'm going to add uh, some pearlescent pigments. All right, so we're doing gold. And I want it to be... Let's see. I'm adding this much in that exact amount of gum Arabic so that it has a lot of sparkle. We're doing a couple of things with that one. Please remember to cover them right away. They will go, they will get everywhere if you as much as hit a fan, you know. I mean, turn on a fan. Okay, this one is on, uh, in Scarlet. It's like a red. I don't think it has any shimmer. However, of course I'm adding some, but I wanted it to be very red. And I'm adding some French Rose. And they're in, it's a Rolio, uh, like an Amazon brand. But I really like them. Okay, so.
Okay, you guys, so this is the final, you know, the final card. Um, I feel like it came out very, very nice. Uh, I want to show you the details and everything. What I did is that I added a red mat, you know, a red panel uh, right behind it um, to tie in this color right here. I just wanted to bring it all together, gold with gold, red with red, and then craft just because my inspiration was from this card that I had made probably like two months ago. And I really liked this craft with this background. Um, so I just decided that that was, whoops, that, that was gonna be um, my project for the holidays. What do you think? You like it, do you not? Let me know. Remember, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and a share with your friends. And please make sure that before you go, hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so you get notifications every time I upload a video. Thank you so much and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.